<laughs> I got your crack on video. <laughs> That's a special one for Justin. That's a special one for Justin. Many hours of video of my crack. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Give it a kiss. Ah. This begins as a nice story about how Robbie and his mom and her boyfriend Lito all met up at a boat in Puerto Penasco to move the boat south from there. Robbie traveled clear across the country and then overnight upon two buses to get to this newly sold sailboat. He was basically begged to move this sailboat. We were not keen on doing it. We would not be gaining much by moving it. However, in the end, we decided that he would carry out the favor. I would stay home on our own sailboat project because it would be much too complicated finding a place for our dog Choco, and we had just put our own sailboat into the water after having her out on the hard for the last four months. Robbie received permission to bring his mum and Lito aboard as crew, two wonderful and reliable people who would help him to move the boat as far as possible within a roughly two-week period of time. Mother and son have traveled many miles together across oceans since he was born. I had no worries that they would safely move the sailboat and Lito would learn a bit about crewing, but I didn't foresee or imagine what strange story would happen to them all next. I gave Robbie and his mum the task of filming the sailboat delivery. I'm looking at mum struggling to work the camera. She doesn't get half the footage just out of focus. It's mum that filmed it now because she doesn't get the focus. Everything started as it normally does in the Sea of Cortez with beautiful scenery and wildlife, and some intermittently strong winds. The first strange occurrence was that the sailboat owner told them that all her credit cards had stopped working just before departing. The owner said, no problem though, I'll pay you back. Oh, look at that rice, what's in there, Robbie? Curry. Oh my, that looks amazing. Did I tell you how good that fish was? Robbie and the crew had been catering to all the owner's needs for nearly a week, organizing and cleaning so that the vessel would be ready to sail safely while they were waiting for the wind to go down. So the crew said, okay, we trust that you will pay us back, and they bought everything needed to expedite the departure. So we left on a very expected, typical Sea of Cortez day, which is after it's been howling, for not to win for the last three days and kayakers went missing in Pinasco and we found dead a few days later. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, ca two kayakers went missing during that blow and they found one kayak and one body, I think so, when we arrived. Oh in... God. So, yeah. yes, for safety reasons. And that's exactly why I was telling you, you see why you don't leave when the weather is bad? And we're leaving Puerto Pinasco, that little hump back there. We're more or less pointing for Bahia de Los Angeles, which is a place I am familiar with. So we left and we had a super calm beginning. We motor, 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 the sun went down. The highlight of that night was the pangeos, the ones that the sea shepherds hate so much over there, were all over us, especially when we got close to San Felipe. Like getting in your way or what? Yes, they were getting in our way and I think they were being aggressive because they thought we were the sea shepherd guys on a sailboat. Like they, they, they come and they're like, one guy cut, cut me off twice, I had to like change directions and all, and they were, they, I was almost a little worried. So you were actively like having to... To dodge, to dodge, to dodge some pangas that were behaving really weirdly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the first night. So the first night. We had a super, 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 super calm crossing. I remember when we passed there a couple of years ago, that was our anniversary. Yeah. So it was almost our anniversary and also like, this time, time this yes. year and you pass through there around the, the same time. It's called the Canal of the Ballena. Okay, it's just ahead around, around the corner over there. And then on the way back, just died. Classic. We, the first conundrum of the trip is how do we get to shore without a dinghy and how will we get fuel. 
You just have the one person kayak. Yes, we have a one person kayak, which was really, can, really can only take one, one person. One person that was missing all the bungs, so it was filling up with water. That was pretty much it. So uh, Lito took the initiative and uh, flagged down a fishing boat, guys. And they were not just kind, like people's generosity in this country like blows my mind sometimes. They took us to shore, they went and got the car, like which was like half a kilometer away. The guy walked, got his car, he came back and picked us, picked us up with the car. He took us to the fuel station out of town. He said, no, don't go to a close one because they rip you off. So they took us all the way to the further gas station. We filled, we did our first hundred bucks of, of diesel and he brought us back and took us back to the boat. Yes, and one of the things we were doing was to find some internet trying to deal, the first step to trying to deal with, with financial situations. So we, we left by here Los Angeles and we headed towards uh, Las Animas, which was one of, one of my favorite anchorages in the Sea of Cortez and I thought we'd all enjoy that very much, spend a night in paradise and we were lucky enough that there was no other boat in there because it's a pretty tight uh, little anchorage where you can put two, maybe three boat if everybody anchors properly. This is Bahia de las Animas, Bay of the Souls. You lost it? El Glotón. El Glotón es el que muere. And we're, we're contemplating stopping in San Francisco as well. But uh, the weather, well, there was just a little bit of wind and the currents were in our favor. So we, we decided to keep going uh, to Santa Rosalia where, you know, apparently there was a marina there. There was, there was an, our next fuel stop. Uh, and uh, access to internet and hopefully banking so she could deal with her stuff. Yeah, we are arriving in Santa Rosalia. We can see the mine ahead. There's a little bit of wind. It's the factory, the mines. Pretty much the same one. Huh? Oh, wow. This e this even this stuff. And this is man made flint. Flint. It's like flint stone. It's, it's another type of stone that snaps. Okay. And it's very sharp. It's like flint. You can make. You can Ooh, make. Oh, and this one. Look at that. Yeah, and this is the obsidian that they make by melting the. We arrived in Santa Rosalia. Uh, marina was full. Uh, we we got three jerry cans of gas. We got to walk around uh, the town, which is beautiful and historical. And uh, we stayed at anchor there. And yet again, uh, we were lucky enough to be brought to shore by some fishermen, who brought us to shore and brought us back. What are they mining there? Gypsum. Gypsum. Yeah, which is a kind of plaster of Paris. Gypsum. I think it's used in cement a lot. So I call it tuna nator. A tuna nator. Like yeah. Terminator for tuna. Yeah, yeah. Robbie not only captains a sailboat well, of course, he also loves to keep everyone well fed with his fishing and cooking skills. C'est quoi ça? Un Sierra. 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 No, Celine will take the, my fishing rod and I, and I do that, and I do that last. So throughout the passage, of course, he was catching some breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. Three, four o'clock in in the night, the wind that actually picked up from the north pretty strongly, which I had seen the forecast, and Justine had sent me a text on the satellite uh, gizmo telling me there was strong winds. So we took shelter in San Juanico, which was an interesting place. We came in at night. And uh, surprisingly, what I remember about entering San Juanico at night is that it wasn't the rocks that were dangerous, it wasn't the wind and the waves, it was the sailboats that did not have their light on. <laughs> like, the, the, most, the, most, the biggest danger was coming in, and luckily my mom was up front with the light, looking around, and she spotted the boat 
that had no light. I left first day in the year, but we've done it during this time of the year. How busy the Sea of Cortez is actually getting. Uh, San Juanico, which is pretty isolated, had 11 boats in the anchorage and there was a whole bunch of camper vans on the beach and there was kids, young youth groups on, on small sailing dinghies that were there. It was really busy. So we stayed only an extra day. We stayed an extra day there to avoid uh, the bad winds. We headed towards Loreto and uh, the weather was perfect. It was nice and calm. Beautiful morning. Elito, how's the morning? Hey, tal, man? Good, good, lovely morning. Enjoying it fully. So I dared pass in the little channel between Coronado Island and Loreto, which I promised myself I would never pass in again. But the weather was beautiful and calm, and I wanted to show everybody the Cause it was crystal clear blue water. It's very shallow there, and as we learned on Rosa, you if you go through there during a blow, it's you actually expect to have the roller coaster of it's, your ride, it's ride deeper, of your life. It's deeper than when when we passed. I don't know if the currents of it's actually not as uh, shallow as it was before. It was really shallow when we passed on our own boat before. The water we are going towards Loreto. The Loreto that we didn't end up stopping because it was kind of rough. Uh, we continue going, and the plan was to go inside uh, or say somewhere near Puerto Escondido. But it was kind of getting a little darkish by then, so we decided to stay in Honeymoon Cove and then go to uh, Puerto Escondido the next day to fuel and do groceries. Honeymoon Cove, there's a few boats anchored next to it. I hear a familiar sound at night. I hear a thump, 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 thump. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know that sound. <laughs> And I look outside and there's a boat trying to anchor at night in, a, in Honeymoon Cove. And I'm like, I know that engine and the boat looks dark. It might be red. I can't make out the color in the night. Then I get, I get the, the monocle I had and I look and I can see the mast is black. The hull is dark. The engine sounds. I'm like, that has to be Rosa. I'm pretty sure of it. And uh, finally, I just grabbed the torchlight and I pointed it towards Rosa and immediately I got the sign I was her because I remember many years ago I installed some anti-reflecting strips on top of a mast on a particular code. We're halfway up the mast. We no, have all the... the way up. Oh, it's, it's at the top? It's all the way up okay. and it's white, yellow, white. And as soon as it passed and I saw the reflection on top of the mast, I'm like, that's Rosa. No one else has that on top of the mast. The boys just came over and said hi from Rosa. She's looking great. Oh, clean, a new paint job. She's looking fantastic. Seeing Rosa sailing around in the Sea of Cortez is wonderful. We're happy that she's been well cared for and utilized to her fullest extent by our friends. And one thing that really makes me smile is thinking about how many people have had their introductory sailing experiences aboard her in the beautiful Sea of Cortez. He's going to jive. Look how fast that boat is. Look at that. Look how fast that boat moves. Which is a missile. We pulled up anchor from Honeymoon Cove and we went to Puerto Escondido where we paid the most for diesel I had ever seen in Mexico, which is, is ridiculous. Like the diesel in Puerto Escondido right now is like 27, almost 28 pesos a liter, which is mind boggling. And we got to see what had happened to Puerto Escondido since we were last there and uh, turn it into some super luxury uh, marina with, and it's full of big fancy power boats and... That's the tiny entrance of Puerto Escondido. <laughs> oh, I saw by, by two of my old boats in one day today, it's fantastic. We saw Rosa morning and now we're seeing my way there she is. Oof the ropes are tighter with a small I should put us a bigger rope somehow. Put an extra rope too. My way was obviously not seeing as much love as Rosa, but we still often think of this mighty little C and C24 that got us safely all around Vancouver Island and down the scariest portion of the Pacific Northwest coast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So good to see my way. Yeah. Especially such a small thing you have to be very 
And we went all the way to Agua Verde, which was spectacular, also very full. We woke up the next morning in Agua Verde, surrounded by sailboats. Here we are, leaving Agua Verde. And we've been catching bonitos, barretta like crazy. I only have one line in the water because it's too much. Then from Agua Verde, we did sort of a overnight passage to uh, San Francisco, or, or also known as the Hook, which is also known as the most beautiful anchorage in the Sea of Cortez. The Sea of Cortez, in this time of the year, is a lot more alive, especially in terms of flora. Uh, I was used to seeing a dry, 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 everything was dry and dead. This time everything was really special on just San Francisco. All the flowers are in bloom. All the desert is blooming. And other bays. Everything was in flower. It was really beautiful. Every every plant, every shrub, everything that was vegetable was flowering and seeding and lots of little creepy crawlies going around eating what they could. It looks like an alien. Yeah. They're bunking up. There's a sleep. She was sleeping and he was bonking her. Yes, you're on the trail. Up here there's a logbook and everybody puts the thoughts of the loved ones and it's full of people who've been here, na boat names and it's very interesting. And we made our contribution. And then there's a little statue of the Virgin Mary. I added some little shells for good luck. And we wrote a little something something and we're gonna put it back in the hole safe. And what was the boat owner doing at this point? Well, the boat owner at this point, which has been days, has been living in the cabin, practically not showing herself like, we've, we've been seeing very little of the owner throughout the trip, I mean... And what did they want you to do? Did the boat owner want you to do anything? Did the boat owner say, what are we doing here? Why yes. did we stop here? Yes, throughout the trip, there was almost a bit of, uh, are we there yet? Are we there yet? When are we getting there? Like, oh, there was an anxiety to get places. And I mean, the weather wasn't the best to get places. We had to move to most of the places, and a few times we had wind, it was very strong. Yes, basically, if we were moving, there was a problem. The engine's been on too long. If we were sitting somewhere waiting for weather, we were sitting there too long waiting for weather. I mean, it was kind of a damned either situation. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. And uh, basically, I don't know what to say. I mean, people who, who are not used to the to the ocean life and the sea of life, I think really need to understand that the schedule and the distances you do and the speeds you do are things is completely determined by the sea and done 12 week, two, 12 days of op of sailing non-stop that would have been hell. First we would have not had a diesel to do it because there was barely any wind and uh, the tanks on the boat are really small we had to keep filling the, the tanks from, with the jerry cans to the tanks every 12 hours I had to top them up to make sure that they stayed topped up because if air got in the tank then, then then the engine would stall and it was a nightmare to to bleed the engine with no tools on the boat which we had three tools luckily i bought three tools before i left because i said i'm not going on a boat without a pair of pliers a screwdriver and a wrench i mean and even then which i didn't end up using because there was work to be done on the engine the last day there was issues when we arrived in la paz with the engine and i had to like kind of service it it shows but there's a boat on the rocks there ay 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 Isa San Francisco is within a day's reach yes. of La Paz, we, so you kind of raced there uh, towards yes. the end, you had a bit of wind, you kept on going to La Paz, and it was kind of uh, the most quick moving portion of your trip. Entering La Paz, I don't know if you can see, there's a huge sailboat mast right there, largest single masted sailboat in the world. We were looking for a place to leave the boat and the lady where she wouldn't just be anchored in a bay. Stranded. Stranded. 
And then not, not, not a single dollar was materialized by this woman. By the boat owner. By the boat owner. You Me, had you had paid your family had paid for the whole trip. Yes, we had paid everything the entire trip from the moment we two days before we left till then. So we made the decision that we couldn't we, we couldn't we, we ran we actually ran out of money. Like we couldn't even go to Puerto Vallarta. Who's gonna buy the diesel at that point? Overall, Robbie, Celine and Lito tell me that they had an excellent trip. They always try to enjoy life to the fullest. They always try to make best of, of everything that comes at them. And they intended to, to do that. And I think that the only thing they didn't intend to do, and the one thing that happened, was to pay for an all-inclusive trip for the boat owner. You know, we have our own sailboat here. We have our own projects. We have our own sailing to do on our own boat. And the main thing is that we trusted that we would not be taken advantage of because this was supposed to be a favor. So arriving in La Paz, it had now been about three weeks that Robbie had been doing things for this person. They were now refusing to pay back what was absolutely owed and we started getting verbally attacked and for no reason and stories, malicious stories being made up about us. We were trusting. A uh, person said they were going to pay us back. Yeah. It was a significant amount of money for us. You know, this means that this month we didn't eat properly. We we didn't pay for our shelter. Yeah, you're very skinny. Well, no, I'm not skinny, but this month it was more difficult to buy groceries, to get pay things done, pay the marina here, all because of this. It was a significant amount of money for us. So this has been really difficult for me to publish because we really, really hate saying anything bad about anybody and bad-mouthing anybody. But I just thought it would be pretty ridiculous not to mention it by the end of this video. I kind of want to, I, I feel like I need to warn the sailing community, especially down there in the La Paz area, that this kind of thing can happen. And generally just mention that this can happen. It, you know, I mention a lot on this sailing channel that there are tons of people out there who help us all the time and the opposite can happen sometimes. So thank you so much for watching and Happy New Year.